Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode of the Open Heaven Daily Devotional Review Podcast. I am Adele Kombolani and on this day, April 8th, 2024, the topic of our Open Heavens is Judging the Anointed. A memory verse is taken from Romans chapter 14 verse 4 and it reads, What thou that judgeth another man's servant, to his own master he standeth or fall or falleth, yea, he shall be holding up, for God is able to make him stand. And a Bible reading is taken from Numbers chapter 12 from verse 1 to verse 6, and I read, And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman, and they said, Has the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Has he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Now, the man Moses was very meek, above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron, and unto Miriam, Come out ye three, unto the tabernacle of the congregation, and they three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud, and stood in the door of the tabernacle, and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words, if there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and I will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches, and the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and it departed, and the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow, and Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Let us not be one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed when he comments out of the mother's womb. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Heal and now, O God, I beseech thee. And the Lord said unto Moses, If our father hath had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out from the camp seven days, and after that, let her be received in again. And Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days, and the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in again, and afterward the people removed from Azrael and preached in the wilderness of Paran. May the Lord bless the reading of His word in Jesus' name. Before we continue, let us pray. Heavenly Father, I will say thank you for your word this morning. Thank you because the entrance of your word brings light and understanding to the simple. Father, we give you all the glory. We exalt you in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that even as we go into your word, you will speak to us in the name of Jesus. Let your word fill our hearts in the name of Jesus. Bless us and enlighten our hearts with your word in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. So today, our Bible, our open heavens, is saying, judging the anointed. So let's go on to read from the open heavens as written by our Father in the Lord. Yesterday, I made it clear that the anointed is not to be dishonored for any reason. Now, the question someone may have in mind is, what do we do with ministers of God who will believe to be hearing? This is a very delicate situation that requires God's wisdom and direction. For example, in our Bible reading today, Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of something they believed he did wrong. At the end of the day, Miriam became leprous and Moses had to pray to God for her to be healed. 
It is not in your place to judge God's servants. Leave their judgments to their master. In Romans chapter 12 verse 19, the Bible says clearly that vengeance is his. Just report the matter to God and he will deal with his anointed as he pleases. Anointed ministers of God cannot hide under the canopy of being anointed and begin to treat his sheep the way they like. Hebrews 10 31 says that it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Believe me, a fellow should not experience God dealing with him or her himself. The reason we discipline erring workers is to shield them from God doing it himself. When a pastor misbehaves, the general overseer suspends him. It is so that the consuming fire will not be the one to do it. So if a pastor overlooks a fellow's wrongdoing because of his or her contributions to the church treasury, that pastor is doing more harm than good because God himself will come in and nobody wants to fall into the hands of the living God. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, David used his position to snatch another man's wife and also got him killed. Nobody could punish him as there was no one who was superior to the king. God had to step in to punish him. From that point on, there was no peace in David's home. Not long after, one of his sons, Amnon, raped his half-sister. And then another son, Absalom, killed him. Later, Absalom rose up against his father. To date, the sword has not departed from Israel on account of the Lord's judgment over David. 2 Samuel chapter 12 verse 9 to 10 When a person is anointed by God and uses that anointing to cheat others, when God punishes that fellow, the punishment might last throughout his or her lineage or from generation to generation. Hallelujah! We bless God for his word this morning. And our topic for today is judging the anointed. So the Bible spoke, um, the Father the Lord wrote about judging the anointed. So in today's Bible passage, we read about the story of Miriam, Aaron, and Moses. And I remember referencing that story yesterday that Miriam and Aaron judged Moses because he married an Ethiopian woman. And God was angry and said, Why would you say that against my servant? He is my servant. I should be his judge. So this brings us to the story, case of judging people that are anointed by God. Like one of the things I have noticed and I've said to myself is when you hear the word he is a man of God, I tell myself what comes before the word God, man. So he is first a man before he is anointed of God. So that makes it a human being like me, like you, that have feelings, that have emotions, that can make mistakes, that can do things that sometimes they now reflect and say, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should have done it better. Many of us, or let me say, all of us have that, that, that challenge or that situation where you do something and you feel like, maybe I should have handled this better. Maybe I should have done it this way. Maybe I shouldn't have done it that way. The same thing with the man of God. That is where we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is able to help us make better decisions make better judgment of situations and circumstances. That is why we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in position to help us. But sometimes we are all human beings and we don't give room for the Holy Spirit and then we can still make mistakes. So it is not in our place as believers to judge a man of God. Don't judge anybody. There's a difference between, let me say, um, judgment is different from calling somebody's attention to something. Judging somebody is different from calling someone's attention to something. You can call an attention to something and that is majorly even done in a way that it is not public and it is not to bring down somebody's reputation. It is just an error. Like, let me give an example. In the church, like I am a children teacher. I've seen situations where teenagers will just come and say, Ah, Sister Bola, um, this and this and this and this. Probably they just tell me do something and they'll just come and miss me and they'll tell me about it. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean it that way. 
This was what I meant. This was what I meant. This was what I meant. I meant. It is different from the person coming out to say, Oh, because she did this, she's like this, she's like this. Why would she do this? She do this rather. She's a bad person. She's that's a different case. And I've had situations where even in church, when we work together as workers, we see issues that happen. I will call each other and tell aunt, brother, this sister, this this thing that happened, this I will talk about it, I will sort it together. That's a different situation from judging somebody or believing that because that person has done that thing, God is not with that person. Or judging the another. I know we understand what it means when we judge people. So God does not want us to judge anybody. And the scripture says here in the book of Romans chapter 14, verse 4, Who art thou that judgeth another man's servant? Imagine I have a need. And then you see my need, and you decide to judge my need. Then, uh uh-uh, why is your bed like this? Why? Then I say, I can say, oh, I'm the one that permitted her to do it. That is why she is my maid. So that is the same thing. Or you saw my worker come to work, probably in an outfit that is like, let me say, that is not corporate. And you begin to judge them and say, ah uh-uh, ah, this place is like this. They are these workers are very responsible. And it is not in your place to judge them because. It's possible that that is the culture of my own environment. So God is the one that can judge any man. And like I usually say, for every believer, each of us have an assignment. Some people cannot go to the prostitutes to go and preach. Probably because God knows they have weaknesses in that area. Or I don't know, it is God that gives us different assignments. But there are people that I know that their own call and ministry is to those kind of people and they minister to them, they speak to them and those kind of people change. So that is God's way of bringing those ones and he has sent that person to them. So if you see such man of God and you say, why is he relating with those kind of people? You'll be so surprised that they are only judging the call of God for his life. There are people that have been called to some particular, to do some things for God that we may not understand. So that is why personally I pray for God. When I see things, especially on social media, that these days people tend to just post a lot of things, catch crews with it, and see a lot of negativity into the air. I tell myself, Holy Spirit, just help me to filter out the things that you want me to know. And even when I don't want to listen to a man of God, or when I just feel as if, I don't, this message just does not sound like something that eats my soul. I just, personally just um, scroll away and I move on to something else I want to do. I don't still have the right to judge that person. No, judgment is not. We can correct people in love. Judge correcting people is different from judgment and even correcting the anointed. The question is how many of us have even corrected ourselves, have judged ourselves, our character, our behavior, the way we we see the things of God, the way we take our lives. How many of us have even judged ourselves before we judge another person? So, today, we should remember the anointed is not, mm, let me say, is not protected to the point that God cannot punish them. God brings his punishment upon the anointed who has refused to do the right thing. And the unfortunate thing is that when you fall into the hands of God, it is a much more worse punishment than falling into the hands of man. It is better to fall even into the hands of man than into the hands of God. I remember the case of David. David knew that he could ask for mercy and said that he would rather fall into the hands of God than to fall into the hands of man. And the repercussion and even the effect of that falling into the hands of God was very merciless. So let us remember that God can punish you. Are you an anointed that you are listening to this? And you feel as if, oh yes, yes, yes. Nobody can judge me. Nobody has the right to judge me. God can judge you. And the judgment of God comes swift and is once. God is not the one that it is not so easy for you to just think that you can just go scot free and maybe God will just give you a little tapping. No. God has a way of punishing people. Remember that when Arab was going to die, his death was merciless. He was dealing with the anointed, he was threatening the anointed, allowed his wife Jezebel 
to threaten the anointed of God. But when God judgment came, it was very bitter and it was merciless. Remember also, Judas also treated the anointed in a very bad way. Probably because Judas thought that Jesus cannot be, be um, let me say, held back. But he receives the reward. Don't forget, Miriam, she had leprosy for judging the anointed of God. So remember that you do not have the right to judge the anointed of God. Only God has the right to judge his anointed. And I pray for every anointed of God today that God will help them in the name of Jesus. Because I think it's only prayer that can help the anointed. And that is why I referenced it yesterday. Even though I didn't look at today's own to, to see the topic before saying yesterday that what we can do as believers, the least we can do is to pray for every anointed person that God has placed upon us in authority, our geo, our pastors, our parish pastors, our mentors, spiritual mentors, pray for them not to fall. Just pray for them that God should give them grace to stand because honestly it is not easy to stand and to stand firmly. So all we, what we can do is to pray for them, ask God for for grace, for mercy, ask God to direct their path because that is the least that we can do. And I pray that God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. So our Bible in one year is taken from the book of First Kings, chapter one to chapter two, and our hint for today is yield not to temptation. A key point for today says. Leave the judgment of anointed ministers who cheat you to God. Again, leave the judgment of anointed ministers who cheat you to God. So thank you for listening to today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this podcast. May God bless you. Have a great day. Bye.